Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at how to use the Pop Fluid node from Houdini 17 to build some fluid simulations. Pop Fluid node is a new node from Houdini 17, but it's not mentioned as part of the new feature. I think it's already very useful on its own, and it also has many advantages over the default flip. Alright, let's fire up Houdini and have some fun. First, we will rebuild this pouring effect, and then we will take a look at the other two effects here. The link to this source file will be provided in the description below. Okay, let's um, delete this .NET node and take a look at the inputs. Here is a very simple container built from the tube object. And then we will have a sphere as the pop source. Select both of them and then create a pop network. Houdini will automatically create most of the common pop nodes. But we still need a ground object and a static object for our collider or container. Now I need to lower down the ground plane a bit. I was using the negative 2 before, so I'm also going to use it here. Let's take a look at the simulation. Um, okay, we need to change the pop source to uh, the second input. Now we get some particles from the sphere. Okay, we are missing a gravity force node here. So now we get some very basic particle simulation. You will notice that all the particles are bouncing up once they hit the floor. So let's turn off the bounce. Now we're going to source our container as the collision object. Simply use the expression up input path to source the first input. But it doesn't look like a fluid right now, so let's add our final node, the pop fluid. Simply connect it to the very end of the pop solver. Before we can start to use it, we will first need to know what this node actually is. If you check the help menu, you see that it says it applies forces between nearby particles to maintain the gold particle separation. It looks like it's a particle force node like the other nodes. In some way, it is. And it also says that this node can be used to capture simple fluids effect. This node is actually used in the new white water solver. If you just get in and search for fluid node, you'll find this node lying there and all the parameters are at their default state. But here I'm going to tell you that this node is actually not a common pop force node like others. It's actually a complete GPU accelerated PBD fluid solver. Okay, so the new question is, what is PBD fluid? After comparing the internal algorithms with some papers, I believe the pop fluid node is actually based on the paper position-based fluids. This is published in 2013 and it's from NVIDIA. Before we talk about what is PBD fluid, let's take a look at the classic SPH fluid. SPH is based on purely particles. In simple words, for each particle, it's trying to average nearby attributes like velocities. It solves the fluid's internal pressure by using this smoothing kernel. That's why it's called a smooth particle hydrodynamics. One of the common problems about SPH is it tends to get unstable when the nearby density around each particle is inconsistent and it requires lots of subsets to solve the internal pressure. Another commonly heard XSPH is an improved variation of the SPH, which solves part of the particle penetration problem. Actually, Houdini comes with a particle fluid solver. It's the implementation of XSPH in Houdini. But I don't think there are many people who will use it in production because it's slow and still a bit unstable. This position-based fluid, also known as PBD fluids, is partially based on the XSPH, and it tries to solve the internal pressure problem by bringing the pressure solving stage into the PBD framework, which uses constraints to solve problems. Basically, a new type of constraint which is based on the positions of each particle rather than a smoothing kernel is introduced to help to get a more consistent density with many iterations. And within each iteration, it's updating particle's position directly rather than accumulating pressure throughout all the subsets and then apply forces at the end like the traditional SPH. You still need a few iterations to solve the internal pressure but it's still more stable and faster. We do have a flip solver in Houdini, but flip is a semi lagrangian semi euler solver. It will accumulate errors when flip stage is trying to apply the updated velocity back to the particles. 
Also, it's not an ideal solution when you're working with small scale fluid. Flips tend to tear apart all the thin surface and tendrils when you don't have lots of particles. Now you know this pop fluid node is the core of the new white water solver. It's in charge of creating all these beautiful form patterns. If we play the simulation, we'll see that it explodes right away. So we need to adjust some of the parameters. First, I will scale down the particle separation. And then I need to double the particle points. Play again. Now we have something better. However, it still doesn't really look like fluid. As I said before, it still requires some iterations to get a stable result. The default value 5 is prepared for the white water solver, which is not enough if you want to get some beautiful fluid. I'll suggest you always start with 20. This value is actually supposed to be the number of particles that describe the largest thickness of your fluid. If your fluid has 10 layers of particles, then it should be at least 10. Using 20 is for updating the position's influence for the vertical or planar direction. Anyway, just remember that you use at least 20 here. Now we play the simulation again, and you can see all the falling particles still break apart. We come to the second important parameter. Since PPD is trying to maintain a consistent density between particles by applying constraints, we will need a very high constraint stiffness here to stick the nearby particles together. This is called the cohesion force. The default value is way too low. I'll suggest you start with 100. Play the simulation again, it looks more like a fluid. We can see that many particles are sticked together and we can feel some surface tension here. However, there are too many small clusters. The next important parameter for a believable fluid is viscosity. The default value is still way too low. I'll suggest you to try 0.1 and 1 based on different kind of situations. Of course, if you need a really sticky fluid, then you need a higher value. Now we see some more improvements here, but it still look a bit odd. The very last important parameter which plays a huge part for the final look is the tensile strength. Unlike the constraint, tensile is trying to use a repulsive force to maintain a consistent distance between nearby particles. If you watch closely, you see that many particles are way too close to each other. Also, the distance between other particles are not very even. I will use 0.005 here, but sometimes I will also use 0.01. Larger numbers tend to maintain a better thin sheets of water and longer tendrils. Also, thin surface is not that likely to break apart easily. If you want to get the original look, you need an even higher stiffness and smaller gravity. I'll suggest you to play around with these parameters, get familiar with their valid range, so you know what you should use in your specific scene. Alright, now let's take a look at the setup of the crown splash. This effect is also actually very simple. First, I generate the fluid body with point from volumes. And it's coming from a simple tube. Then I create a circle object with many points. Initial velocities are assigned to them with a point wrangle node. These velocities will then be imported into the DOP simulation to drive the particles. Houdini 17 has a very convenient feature in the information dialog. You simply click the names of the attributes and it will create all the visualizers for you automatically. Then I just extrude the circle and then scatter some points on top of it. All these points will inherit the velocities we defined earlier. That's for the velocity input part. And the third input is just a simple container. In the DOP network, there is only a pop wrangle node that reads the velocity as force and applied force to nearby particles. There are some different values in the pop fluid node. Here I use higher iterations and stiffness. I also apply a larger tensile strength. Also, the viscosity is set to 1. The combination of all these parameters gives you a beautiful crown shape. Surface tension is part of the innate character of the PPD fluid. You don't need to do anything or abuse the curvature of surface like the flip fluid. The last example is even simpler. The torus serves as particle input and the circle is for applying forces. I use a pop curve force node to source the circle as the curve force, and then a pop force node to add some turbulence. The pop fluid node here is once again a bit different. I want a loosely distributed look for the ring, and 10 here for the stiffness is enough. Viscosity is set to 1 to prevent a granular look. 
the force generated by these two force nodes is randomly reduced within this wrangle to create a more interesting motion for the particles. Finally, new retime node in 17 is used to slow down to half of the simulation speed. So, what are the pros and cons with PPD fluid? First, the surface tension from its innate character can give you very good results. Long tendrils in this water portal usually break apart when simulated with fluid fluid. Second, consistent separation between particles provide a series of benefits. It makes surface receding unnecessary, which means you can get very smooth and stable meshing results, which never flickers. This is however a notorious problem for slow flip fluid. Even space particles let you use much less numbers of particles to maintain any small scale structure like droplet, tendril, or thin surface. If you are simulating this stuff with fluid solar, much more particles are required to form these structures. Because of these reasons, PPD fluid is really good for small scale fluid. However, you definitely would not want to use PPD fluid for any thick water tank or massive scale liquid simulation. Especially when you are dealing with hundreds of millions of particles, you will need huge number amounts of iterations, even extra subsets to maintain a stable water body from exploding. Although side effects didn't mention this node as part of the Houdini 17 feature, it doesn't stop us from using it, and I believe they are going to improve it in the future, add some more user-friendly functions and make it more accessible. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something useful, and see you next time.